All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So today we'll be looking at the topic of setting a career all mark using industrial training. Setting a career all mark using industrial training. Um, just for formal formality's sake, um, I want to appreciate MFMC for this opportunity. Myself, I am Emmanuel Sika, founder of Youth Initiative for Economic Empowerment, where we are providing suitable jobs to youth and making the next generation of successful entrepreneurs. Um, we've launched various programs across Africa as we've reached out to youth, under, underserved youth in countries like Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, and over nine more African countries. And we aim to expand. We have quite two initiatives out there currently going on. The first, the skill up program, where we have people across five countries in Africa rounding up their program. These people are on the south, and we have the job acquire program, which is open to students and fresh graduates looking for their next opportunity. Let me amaze you. Um, do you know in Nigeria over 500,000 students graduate every year? And out of this 500,000, just 30. 37,800 people are able to secure a job. Yeah, that's just it. And this is very painful. Within the first year, just 37,000, that means over 400,000 graduates out there are able to secure a job within the first three years. And this need to be changed. Why? Because youths are not setting their career using industrial training. Okay. okay, now this is a fun fact. At least 60% of students in each graduating class participate in an internship. In the US, it is called a co-op during their time in college. Approximately 70% of employers offer their intern full-time jobs. Wow, this is marvelous. And students who complete internship are 15% likely to remain unemployed in the first year after graduation. So what simply is an internship? An internship is a short stay with a company. This can be the period of 12 weeks. It can go from months to weeks to Years at times. Um, top companies in Nigeria, like consumer goods, like Indomie, have their internship for the period of one year, and some other bank has their internship for the period of six months to two years. So, this is just the fact out there. So, today we'll be looking at four pillars. First, we'll be looking at how to write a resume, what are the step by step process for you to get an IT placement how to prepare for an interview and how to stand out. All right, what is a resume? What exactly is a resume? A resume is your sales document as a job seeker. Now, I assume everyone here is a student. So you are a student going out for an internship and that makes you a job seeker. So a resume is simply your sales document. It tells you to the recruiter, one second to the hiring manager who decide your employment within an organization. So to decide whether you are fit for the organization or not. But the first thing that sells you to them is simply your resume. Okay, in Nigeria and in most parts of African countries, we call resume a CV, which is called a curriculum vitae. So please let not confuse the two together. Resume is also called a CV. So let's proceed. Um, this is just a simple task for you all during the course of the event. Take a screenshot or write a copy of what you gained, summarize what you learned today, tag YIEE, tag myself on LinkedIn or in any social media network. Add a note, for example, I'm looking for front-end developer internship. Um, the last time we had an event like this and people who partake in this, they got a lot of opportunities. Um, some had 20 calls and landed to internship. So simple, do this and then you'll be amazed. 
So let's proceed. What are the resumes do and don't? We're going to the serious part. The first thing is consistency while writing the resume. Consistency in alignment, in font, in color, and in familiarity. Ensure you are consistent. And one thing is, if you're looking for a design-related role, bring in creativity into your resume. Okay, a friend who is looking for an internship placement at Google for a UI design, just model the Google homepage in form of the resume. Created the resume with Figma, which is ATS compatible. And then amazingly, the recruiter called her and said, oh, tell me what's your inspiration? Why do you want to work with Google? And she got the job. It's just as simple as that, be consistent. The next is use strong action verb. For example, you use verb like created, collaborated, manage, and lots more. The third is use the car method. Um, mm -hmm. Please kindly mute your mic so the noise won't be infiltrated. Thank you. Um, use the car method. The car method stands for contest, achievement, and result. That's a word. So Thank when you. writing your resume, use the contest, use the achievement, and then the result method. So your resume should consist of what you did while in the role, what you achieved, and what results did your achievements in that from it. For example, created an email marketing campaign for a product which totaled 500 impressions and 200 clicks. So I spoke about contest, what I did, that is created an email marketing campaign for a product. I spoke about the achievement, totaled 500 clicks, and I spoke about the results, 500 impressions, and then it led to 200 clicks. Um, please, I can hear some background noise. All right, um, muted. Sorry. Okay, um, now after that, the next thing. Ten minutes. I think I'm busy. Okay. Now the next is include numbers. Um, try to quantify your work as possible. For example, you can see increase by five hundred impression, and you can see two hundred clicks. So why write a resume? Please use numbers. And the last, tailor your resume to the job you're applying for. When applying for a job, ensure you have relevant experience. Um. A friend from Amazon, I'm a Miller, we say uh, you need to have 100% experience. But one of our mentors at E, who is working at at and used to say, just ensure you meet the 70% of the requirements. And if you are done, you are good. So different recruiters, different expectations. But in all, ensure you meet the experience for the job you're applying to. So what are the don'ts of resume? The first thing is including irrelevant information. Including irrelevant information. Avoid irrelevant details. Details like your date of birth, details like your full address, details like where you are calling from, your local government, your place of birth. These are irrelevant. Please um, kindly mute yourself if you are not speaking, please. Okay, now avoid those details as those are very, very important. And the next is no skill in bullet point. Um, when writing resumes for the resumes I've reviewed so far, especially for students and for fresh graduates, um, I noticed there is no skill in their bullet point, okay? They write, they print out their bullet point like manage 15 meetings. That's a good one, but it can be changed to, okay, manage 15 meetings using Trello. Trello is a tool and is a skill that amounts to improvement in productivity in the company by 100%. So that you are communicating more. So ensure you use skill 
in the bullet point, for example, the skill highlighted in the, ex in the example there is email marketing. Now the third is excluding leadership experience. Um, you should know that recruiter wants to see your leadership experience as much as they want to see your work experience. Please do not exclude leadership experience. Experience in terms of clubs, in terms of association, ensure that this is being included in your CV. The fourth is lack of chronological order. Um, we have people who did a project, for example, your students, and most of you won't have an experience section that is work experience. So what you will have is what we call a project section. So in the project section, you have a project which was done in March 2021. And then next to it, you have another project. The next project you put in was in September 2021. Ensure there is chronological order. Chronological order means from the recent to the least position. That is from the reset to the first position. And the fifth is multiple reviews. Um, get your resume reviewed by as many people as possible. But ensure the people reviewing your resume have experts in resume writing or you're working in that company or something real close. So ensure you do this. So we've talked about the do's and we've talked about the don'ts of resume. Okay, if you have question on this part, kindly put in your question in the chat box as I'm going to go through it and pick out your question. Okay, moving ahead, we'll be looking at a breakdown of a resume. Okay, I'll be sharing the resume of my close friend, um, Jonathan Javier. Jonathan Javier is the founder of Resulting. At Resulting, he helps um, non traditional people non-traditional people, student, fresh graduate, professional, and get into the top companies like Google, Snap, and the like. So this was the resume you used to get into Snap straight after school. So I'll be sharing some secrets of the resume and it's very, very simple. The first, include your full name, your first name and your last name. For example, Jonathan Javier. The next is include your LinkedIn profile which is called your portfolio, then include your phone number and include your email address, as simple as that. Your LinkedIn profile, your phone number and your email address. And please take home the state. Um, if your location is close to the job location, for example, you stay at Lagos and the company you're applying to, their work quarter, which that job is posted is at Lagos too. You can put in Lagos, Nigeria. That will give you more edge than other people applying in various, in various places. But if you're applying for a role that is outside the state, outside the country, please, as much as possible, try to remove your address. Okay, immediately after this, as a student, the next section which we, you should have is your education section. Your education section should contain the name of your university. For his example, is University of California, Riverside. And it should contain your major, um, your major in Futa coming to Nigeria University talks about your department. For example, you can put in major in computer science, major in electrical, electronics, and the like. And then your CGPA. Please listen and listen carefully. If your CGPA is less than 3.5, please do not include it. If your CGPA is more than 3.5, include it as this will give you an edge. I'll repeat that again. If your CGPA is less than 3.5, do not include it. If it's more than 3.5, please include it as it will give you an edge. Okay, now the next is, on the right hand side of the resume, you have the location. For example, if you are in Futa, what we'll be showing there will be Akure on those dates. Now, the expected year of graduation. You can put in graduation date or expected dates, June 2021, or yours as it didn't fit. So, this is the first part of the resume, which is your contact and your educational details. If you have a question on this, please do well to. Type that in the chat box too, as we'll be going back to that. So the next straight down is the work experience. The work experience. 
on hiring managers says this is the most important part of a resume. Hiring managers like, okay, friend um, Adam Broda, who previously worked as a senior project manager at Amazon um, during his post and during sharing of his knowledge with YIEE, he said one major thing he looks for while looking at resume for Amazon is the work experience. Um, please don't feel, um, don't feel an imposter syndrome. Don't feel belittled if you don't have a work experience. I understand the hiring manager understand. Why? Because you are a student. So what you should do instead is this. Um, if you don't have a work experience, um, call this the project section. And then put in the project you've done. What was the project? What was the impact? What was the results? Remember the CER method, the contest, the achievement, and the result. So the first, which you usually have, is the name of the company. And for it, for is Jonathan he has Snapchat Inc. And then your role in that company for is he have operation specialist product up. You have the location um, for mine for the past two years. Most of my roles has been remote in companies, while working with companies in Nigeria and also India. So they've been remote. If yours is remote, can they put remote? If it's in a specific location, can they impede that location like Ikeja Lagos, like Akure in Nigeria, and so more. So now this is one thing you should take note on the coloring, okay? Now, the first thing which you can see there is um, connected user trying to implement go to market strategies. You can see it was using the skill. For example, when you look at the job description of an operation specialist, though what you will see there is go to market. You're going to see things like training, operational workflow, and the like. So he highlighted this skill in orange color. So that is very important. So now implement go to market strategy for new updates called Cheetah. Improve user experience and gather data for queries while increasing operation satisfactory rating by 11%. Notice the numbers. For each of the bullet points in the resume, you choose the numbers. And here is the golden tips. Um, for each of your project section or your bullet points, ensure that they are between three to five bullet points. Three to five bullet points. You got that. All right, if you got that, let's move ahead. Same down with his others um, experience section, the contest, the achievement, and then the result. So that's all about the work experience. And please don't feel um, intimidated. We have a template at YIEE -E resume template, just a one page for any intent to use out there. And for over 100 of people have used it, and currently we have testimony of over 30 people who has landed paid internship and job opportunities through this template. So I'm going to paste the link in the chat box, but let me just call that. You can go to yiee.org slash resources. Now you can get the uh, resume template from there, and then you can get our job application tracker. So we forge ahead to the next section. The next section is the leadership experience. The leadership experience is just um, what you did while in school, while outside school, while voluntary, and many more. So now this is your golden shot. If you were in school and you were the vice president, this is where you speak up for yourself. If you are in a club and you're part of the executive board, this is where you speak for yourself. And what this means is, um, are you just an ordinary students who just go to school to learn, or you are engaged with other extracurriculum activity that add to your professional or your career life? It's just as simple as that. For his, he has Association of Latino Personnel for America. The location is at Riverside. And what he was able to do is he was able to um, partner with 100 professionals and recruiters in various firms and organizations. 
and bringing 10 companies, including Deloitte, KPMG, Vanguard, Carl, and other professional dinners with 150 attendants together. So for those who organize this event, okay, you can put it youth 360. Okay, I brought about 20 people across the institution of FUTA together to learn about resume creation. So this is something which is attributed to you in your leadership experience. So if you have that across all your leadership experience, remember the rule using contest, the achievement and the results what you did, what you were able to achieve, and the results. Then we move to the last section, which is called the skill and interest. In the skill and interest, in the skill, you talk about your art skill. Please take note, your art skill alone. Don't talk about skill like communication. Don't talk about skill like um, leadership and all other soft skills. Talk about art skill. For example, for easy, we spoke about Microsoft Office, specifically Excel and PowerPoint, as these two are the major for that role. It spoke about CRM, using Zendesk, using Confluence, using Jira. So that's that for that. It spoke about G Suite, and G Suite has to do with Google Meet, Google Mail. It has to do with Google Calendar, Google Content, and a lot more. And then SQL, it did this in the class. So what interests you? So outside of work, what do you do? Um, for myself, if you look at my resume, what I did is um, I work with the United Nations bodies, and I spend 10 hours a week apart from work with them. So that is my interest. And I also speak on career coaching and advice at online various conferences and university. That's also my interest. So over to you, um, have you make up your resume and I hope you're able to learn from this resume section. Now, if you find this very interesting, kindly use the hashtag in the comment box, interesting, before we move ahead. Okay, just type interesting in the comment box. All right. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, let's move ahead. We'll have quite a ton of response there. So the next slide, how to get an internship. Well, I'm going to be moving um, with a great speed now. So how to get an internship? The first thing you need to do is, first, do you have an employable skill, preferable a digital skill? Um, in the generation, you have to link your course to a skill. On March 2021, I interviewed with the United, with the 75th United Nations President, um, Bruce Kiel, and he said, in Africa, in the year 2030, there are going to be 230 million jobs, sorry, 630 million jobs that require 230 million trainings. And then this will be in the digital space. So this is why you need to have a digital skill. So whatever course you're doing, ensure you can link it with a digital skill. So first, kindly answer this. The first question, do you have a digital skill? Yes or no? So just write one, yes, no, two, yes, no, three, yes, no. Okay, the first, do you have an employable skill? Yes or no. The second, do you have a resume? Yes or no. The third, do you have an updated portfolio? Yes or no. Let's have that. Number one, two, three. Let me get your answer in the boss, in the chat boss. So do you have an employable skill? Number one, yes. Number one, no. Number two, yes. Number two, no. Number three, yes. Number three, no. Awesome, I can see yes, no, yes. Awesome, let's just have this. As that is going on, that will determine if you are fit to get an internship. So I'll be giving you step-by-step -step guide on how to get an internship this year, preferably paid internship. Okay, I will say this, um, when I transited into the technology industry, 
um, I moved, I climbed from the ladder zero to earning the sum of 70,000 during my internship training. And then in the space of three months within the internship, I got a full-time placement that doubled to triple my salary. And that's just how it has been going. So I'm going to give you what I used in order to acquire all these results in less than a year, okay? So the first thing is acquire an employable art skill. The next is have an updated portfolio. Your portfolio, I'm going to define this later. The next is have an updated resume. And the last is apply to at least three jobs per day. So let's go quickly. Um, an ask skill is simply your capability to get a job done. Um, most ask skills today has to do with programming, um, marketing, data analysis, and lots more out there, even to project management. So you just have to place your course even to the skill. So you match it. For example, you are studying forestry and agriculture and aquaculture, that is, I uh, think, if there is something like that in FITA. So now in the skill, you have to do with management, managing the fishes. So you can learn a skill like project management. Now you use this in the tech industry and you're able to use this in the IT and you get paid for it and the department accepts this. So that's just the secret sauce to getting art skill. Ensure it is relevant. The next is have an updated portfolio. Your portfolio is simply the collection of your work samples online. And there are various portfolio websites for designers. You can use um, Behance for content writers. You can use journal portfolio or contently. And there are others. Um, you have free websites to use and various. Just ensure you have this portfolio online. The next is have an updated resume. I have defined the resume in the previous lesson. And you just have to have it up to date with your latest project, with your latest work experience, as this gives you an edge. And the last is simple, apply to three jobs per day. So we have a job tracker. You can go to yiee.org slash resource, and then you're going to get access to this job tracker in order to use to track your jobs. So when you apply to three jobs per day, there's possibility that 5% will convert to an interview, and then you'll be able to convert like 2% to a full role. Now, if you do this for 30 days, that means 5% of 100, you should be able to get at least 25 interviews in a month, and then you should be able to convert that's 2%. So you should be able to convert two, three jobs to full-time role. So this is just the statistics that work out there. So let's look at how to prepare for an interview. I'll be giving you four tips on how to prepare for an interview, but you can visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash YIEEHQ to get access to our information on resume on interview. We have interviewed people from top companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, just to name but few on how they got to where they are, what interview teams they have, how they started their career, and so much more. So the first interview tips I'll be giving you is researching the company understand the key information about the company and what you are looking for are just various things. The first is looking at the sheer value. Yeah, what is the value you and that company share? Research on employees benefits. Um, employees benefit like salary ranges, employees benefit like um, compensation. For companies, even in Lagos, they provide um, working accessories. And when I mean working accessories, I mean MacBook, I mean, setting up your remote workspace and various lots of others. And this is countless over and over and over. Companies are doing this. In the US, companies give their employee at least $1,000 to set up their workspace. And that's just it. So you need to recite the benefits. What benefits are you going to gain from working with them? So you need to learn about the company business operation. Now, what are the various products in the company? If you want to work with Google, what you should be looking at is what is the various products in Google, like Google Play, like Google, Google Suits, Google Music, and various products and where you can work with. Even YouTube is now a product of Google. 
So the fourth is research the company leadership. Um, who are those leading the company? Who is the CEO, the CTO, the CMO? And just this, um, it came out, okay, during the interview prep with a lady who got tons of interview with top investment bank in Nigeria, and she was able to convert two. She got, she was able to convert to into jobs in the space of, I think, two months. And during the interview prep with her, we talk about the company and when she went there, the question they asked her is, who was our current CEO? I think that was Coronation Bank. Who was the current CEO? Who is the current CMO? And she was like, I did not pay attention to this. So you need to research the company leadership. The next is expand your research to news and research events. Ask for network for opinions, candidates, headlines, set aside time, and you can see the others just do this and then you'll be able to research properly on that company. Okay. Now, the next is practice your answer to common interview question. For example, tell me about yourself. Um, I've answered this question. Tell me about yourself in our YouTube channel. You can just go there, youtube.com slash Y-I-E-E-H-Q. And majorly what they're asking is, okay, why are you a fit for the role? What value are you bringing into the company? Why should you employ other, other candidates? And this is where you sell yourself with your past experience, your skill. And one trick which um, I use here is using the STAM method. Well, I'm giving you an expo. But using the STAM method, your situation, your tax, then your achievement, and then the results. With this, you'll be able to conquer any interview. So tell me about yourself. You want to talk about your previous experience. Now, the skill required by the employer. Have you used it in your project? Have you used that in your classes? How you use that in your workplace to achieve results. So there are various and tons of more questions out there, like why are you a fit for the job? Why do you want to work with us? What's your interest in this room? And tons out there. Visit our YouTube channel to get a lot of these, okay? Then the third is reread the job description. This is the more reason why you should see the job description always. Um, last month during my interview with Jumia for a senior position, a senior marketer position, a senior marketer position. Now, um, the CFO asked me, have you seen the job description? I applied for this job one month ago and you are asking me, have I seen the job description? But thank God for the job tracker at EE. I was able to get out the job description in a minute, look at what they are looking for, then use the STEM method to defend myself in the interview. And that was just it. And the last is use the STEM method in answer question. Prepare to ask about time in the past where you use specific skill, use the situation, tax, action, and then the results which you got from all this, as this is very important. So I'm going to give you an example. Why do you want to work with this company? Okay, why working with foreign admits as an email marketer, I was able to increase their lead to about... 13,000 13, in the space of two weeks through the mental conference, which was the biggest mental conference in India. And I was able to use tools for automation like SendingBlue, SendGrid, and Zoom CRM to ensure that each message got to different segments at a time. And this led to a wonderful work done. And at the end of it, we were able to achieve a good quality result that our partners like to feel we are happy and they were satisfied with our results. And this led to satisfaction of the organization. Simple situation, tax, action, and the results. Okay, how do you enjoy the section in the scale one to five? One means bad and five means excellent. And this is where I caught the curtain open. And once again, I want to say thank you to MNCF for the invitation and for the privilege to speak with you today. And I hope it was an impactful section. So let me know if the section was impactful. If it was, can you type MFCF in the chat box, use the hashtag, and then I'm going to know that you really enjoyed the section. Okay, let's go. So if you want more, you can visit 
and linktree slash ye as this will get access to our community to our youtube channel to learn about our career to our social media pages to get referrals opportunity to top companies like facebook amazon google as we did as we do this every time um last week we referred tons of people into tiktok um through a partner working in there and sincerely it was marvelous so i'll be checking the chat now for question and i'm glad it was insightful i can see four three awesome okay um can we have the pdf slide okay i'll be sharing the slide um, with mmcf immediately after this so you can go back to that after the meeting and i hope you enjoyed it Oh, I never knew Sylvia resuming mean the same thing. So now um, I will hand it over to Olimide and I say thank you so much. And I will hang around for questions and then we move. So namaste and we say thank you. All right. Thank you, Sav. Thank you very much for sticking with us. We really learned a lot. We really learned a lot. We really appreciate this. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? All right. Sir. Yeah, I can. We really appreciate.